Welcome to the Anxious Love Coach Podcast, a place for creating meaningful, conscious, secure, long-term partnerships. Here, we talk relationship anxiety and creating healthy, magnetic dynamics within partnership to help you feel confident and alive within committed partnership. My name is Natalie Kennedy, and I'm your host. I'm a relationship anxiety coach and meditation teacher. I've worked with hundreds of clients battling anxiety, and after experiencing extraordinary shifts in my own healing relative to partnership, now combine my lived personal experience and professional training to help others trust themselves within relationship and in their lives. I've been to the edge and back with my now husband from relationship anxiety and come out confidently to the other side. I want to pass the tools I've learned along to you to help you trust yourself in relationships and also create magnetic, hot dynamics with your partner. I believe lots of mainstream relationship advice today can make us anxious and dissatisfied. So let's jump in and normalize challenges that modern relationships and real people go through while also giving you tools to trust yourself, drop the shame, and alchemize your messy, twisted relational truths into profound inner wisdom and aliveness. If you haven't yet, be sure to join my communities over on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Anxious Love Coach. You can also request a 30-minute relationship anxiety assessment with me depending on availability or ask me a question over on my website at www.anxiouslovecoach.com. I've also got a wonderful relationship anxiety meditation available to you as thanks for subscribing to my email list. Thanks for being here and enjoy this episode. Hello, my friend. It's really nice to be back. I'm a little nervous, and I'm going to be honest, I'm pretty unscripted today. Believe it or not, most of my podcasts are quite heavily scripted, so as to prevent a lot of ums and uhs, but I didn't have as much time to script. I haven't had as much time, so hopefully Preston can edit out a lot of my ums and uhs, and you can can tolerate some rambling that maybe usually isn't there. I apologize in advance. Oh, it's been a while. Uh, a few months, in fact. Um, life has been very full, very, very much full. But in today's episode, I'd like to talk about the uncertainty, uncertainties of making babies. If you've been following me for a long time, when I started this podcast, I was probably in my <clears throat> late 20s, and now I'm turning 32 this week. And who knows, maybe you found me when you were in your mid-20s. Obviously, it's people of all ages listen to this podcast, but I think when we're dealing with relationship anxiety, A lot of times it's people who are in their mid-20s or 30s who are looking for a partner to choose to settle down with. And a large percentage of this audience is potentially looking for a life partner to settle down with. And so a lot of times that's who I'm speaking to. And as you guys know, I'm not a therapist or psychologist. I've taught meditation and yoga for for 10 years, and I've applied the mindfulness tools in my own relationship, and that's that's primarily where I speak from. Um, But because I'm not like a licensed therapist, I can't speak on, I guess, heavy intellectual psychological concepts it's it's a lot more human than that and you either love that about me or you or you hate it if you want someone with a very clinical approach you know go find and someone who specializes in relationship ocd like obsessive compulsive disorder and can actually give clinical language to this to this struggle of constantly needing certainty reassurance and really struggling with doubts but if you want a more human approach, I would argue I take a more spiritual approach also, then then I'm, I'm your person, I, an imperfect human trying to figure this out. And if you love just listening to me ramble, then you're in the right place. Anyway, so a large percentage of you guys listening are in your mid-20s or early 30s looking for a partner to settle down with. And if you've been with me for years, maybe by now, if you haven't, it's like literally not a big deal. But Maybe by now, some of you, especially if you're choosing to listen to this particular episode, have actually chosen a life partner, and maybe you've even gotten married. And uh, some people have reached out to me letting me know that that um, 
thanks to this podcast, thanks to my content, you've, you've decided to settle down with a partner. And I'm so excited and humbled by that. And also it, it, I feel a lot of pressure like, oh gosh, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know if I'm going to live up to your expectation. I hope you didn't build a foundation of your marriage based on who you think I am. Because one day I will disappoint you. Anyway, um, I'm pregnant. <laughs> That's actually where I've been. So some of you guys might have known from last year I had a miscarriage. And um, after that, I recovered. And then Preston and I moved to Medellin, Colombia. And we actually found our dream house. It was it was a surprise. Like We literally landed, and within one week, um, we were guided to our, our birdhouse. We were actually calling it a birdhouse before before we even knew it existed. And then when we walked in, it was a beautiful house and I fell madly in love. And on our move-in day, a bunch of macaws and Amazon parrots landed on our neighbor's balcony and I just started weeping because it turns out it was a birdhouse and it was absolutely spectacular. And I have my husband to thank for finding this house. It's it's a big work in progress. It's old, it has leaks, it has all sorts of problems, but it's our home. And immediately upon move-in, uh, we, we conceived. So that was, that was great. And unlike last, my last pregnancy, which miscarried at around 11 weeks, this one is, seems to be sticking where I'm about halfway through 16 weeks. And unlike the last pregnancy, uh, this time I had major symptoms. <laughs> Uh, I had morning sickness kick in around the six week mark and it did not let up until I would say about week 12 when I entered my second trimester. And as soon as the exhaustion hit and the morning sickness kicked in, I wanted no part to do with the outside world and I just withdrew from life and my business and, and stopped podcasting and making content. So anyway, um, Second trimester for me personally has been awesome. I'm feeling a lot better. But anyway, that's not what the podcast is about. Um, every pregnancy is different. And this episode is definitely not a how to get pregnant. Um, but I'll share my experience and you can do with that what you want. And it may or may not help. Just just because something worked for me doesn't mean it will work for you. And just because something didn't work for me doesn't mean um, it can't work for you. So this episode is a lot about uncertainty. Um, I hope that by listening to me for maybe years or months, um, you will understand that I have never promised a a reprise? Is that the right word? I hope it is. If it's not, I hope you can contextualize and figure out the rest of the sentence. Um, is not a, a reprise from uncertainty. A lot of the philosophies and techniques that I share, it's not to get rid of uncertainty at all. And um, it's not even to get rid of anxiety. Anxiety is a very powerful messenger, as Cheryl Paul would say. And it's, it's worthy of being treated with respect and reverence. Um, anxiety has been my biggest teacher, and I still experience it from time to time, sometimes in a debilitating way. God knows that throughout pregnancy, um, I have dealt with a lot of uncertainty, especially after having ha had a miscarriage. But I do want to talk about the unique uncertainties of, of trying to conceive, if that's where you are. And like I said, you can, you can do with that what you want. What I will say is that um, in both times I got pregnant, both the first one where I miscarried and this present second one, um, both times were when I was really settled. Um, the majority of you listening probably are not digital nomads, but uh, I spent the last, the better portion of the last four years traveling. I've been traveling around the world. I've been working online. And my husband used to work full-time in Irvine, California, and then during COVID, um, he ended his business and kind of joined me to help and took a sabbatical, <laughs> which, was, which was really awesome. Anyway, uh, he's in startup mode and starting a new business right now, which has been all sorts of challenging. And uh, in the meantime, I'm, I'm slowing down, so there's been all sorts of uncertainty. But I will say that 
First and foremost, it makes sense to me that in both cases where I got pregnant, it was when I landed somewhere that with a sense of permanence. So the first time I landed in Irvine, California, and I wasn't planning on leaving for some five months or something like that. And the second time was literally like a week after we moved into our new house and there was a sense of permanence to it. So um, again, correlation does not equal causation, but to me it would make sense that a baby would resist landing in the body from a spiritual level if you're all over the place. So I'll say that. Um, another thing, and also I have I have bullet points, but I, I did not script this like I usually do. So these are just a lot of insights I've had. They're not scripted. They're not organized. You can just do what you want with this. Um, another aspect of, of the uncertainty of baby making, um, if you've had any miscarriages before, um, that can add a, a large layer of uncertainty um, to the process of baby making. And if you do get pregnant, I hear a lot of stories about women who are very anxious about keeping the baby. Um, I feel very lucky in that the second time that I got pregnant, um, there was some anxiety around losing it, but I didn't have it too bad. I, I've heard about women having it really, really debilitating anxiety about having a second or third miscarriage. I can only imagine if I, if I lost the second one, I probably would be more anxious on the, on the third round, but, um, I haven't really had it that same fear. I think maybe because I my first trimester was so symptomatic, I, whereas my first one was not. And maybe that's been reassuring in a way that everything is fine in there. But I also hypothesize, and again, it's a hypothesis, not a conclusion, that because my miscarriage experience was so complete feeling, I grieved it completely, and I didn't feel like I brought that baggage into my into my second pregnancy. Um, I don't know how to say this, but I'll say that my miscarriage experience was a bizarrely positive one. It felt very complete and non-traumatic, and I think for that reason, I didn't feel scared if it happened again. Um... Okay, and also if you've if you've had a miscarriage, um, statistically that doesn't mean you won't go on to have a healthy pregnancy after that. But it still, there's you've got this this thing that happened to you once. You're part of this weird club of loss that not a lot of people talk about. Um, another thing I want to mention, and I don't know if a lot of people take this into account when they're trying to conceive, or especially. When they're nowhere near trying to conceive if you're like at the end of your 20s i've mentioned this before i've uh on my patreon especially recently it's i do want to mention this not as a warning not as a thing to make women panic not at all it's not like that it's just i want pe- women to have a realistic um, perspective and to not get too delusional with the prospect of baby making so on the one hand you know, if you're in your late 20s or early 30s, you do not need to panic. And at the same, at the same time, on the other hand, don't pretend like you have all the time in the world either. It's kind of for me. That's kind of my in between perspective. Don't panic. You're good, but don't act like you have all the time in the world either. Um, because for me, it took a while to get pregnant the first time, and then when I had a miscarriage, it took me a while to recover. And then after the recovery, it took me a while to get pregnant the second time. And that's assuming that, and and I still have almost five months to go before I have a baby in my hands. So the trying to conceive process can take a really long time. The process of baby making can take a really long time. Um, I wish more women thought about this if, if they knew they wanted kids, because you might be a bit more intentional with how you budget your your time in the future Um, i'm all for manifestation but also you know these things take time if you want to have a baby statistically it could take you a year to get pregnant Um, and then if you carry to term that's nine months so between you (laughs) starting to try and you actually having a baby in your hands is two years at best 
That's not including a miscarriage that you might have, you know, or a stillbirth where you have to start all over and recover. Um, and if you're not married, then you're probably going to take time to plan your wedding. Maybe you're going to have a honeymoon and then you'll start the process. So between you deciding that you want children and actually having a baby in your hands could take something like five years if you're not married. And that's assuming you want children um, in wedlock, which I did. Not every woman does. And I certainly don't judge women who want to do something um, non-linear and non-traditional. And I don't know, I wanted to go the more traditional route. I wanted my babies to be legitimate in the eyes of the government and have my husband's last name. So that's why I went the traditional route, but it, it takes a long time. I was surprised at how long the process takes and I'm not even there. I haven't even, I don't even have a baby in my hands yet. So it's just something I wanted to mention. Um, the beautiful thing is that today we have all sorts of amazing technology. You can freeze your eggs. We've got IVF and um, women are having children later than ever. Um, but then my question to you is, is, you know, do you want to be trying to conceive when you're, when you're 40? Um, a lot of women are in the best shape of their lives, um, when they're in their forties, better than they were in, in their twenties. And I don't discount that, but it's just something I want women to at least be aware of and then make an informed decision. Um, <sighs> all right. <laughs> so, uh, as for like the actual process of trying to conceive, um, it was, it was brutal in many ways. As I've mentioned before, with, with all anxiety and relationship anxiety, one of the reason, one of the ways you can feel more free in relationship and love and life is to not be so afraid of disappointment. Um, I am a big advocate for allowing disappoint the emotion of disappointment in your life, that big, heavy, ugh, darn it. Like budget some room into your life for that feeling. I think a lot of unnecessary suffering for people today is happening because they're assuming that disappointment means they've done something wrong or that if they'd done things right, that things would never not go their way and they wouldn't have to suffer this torturous human experience of disappointment. But that's like just normal human suffering that we have no tolerance for nowadays. Um, when I got started in my relationship anxiety journey, I had this preoccupation, this obsession with never having any regrets, never having any disappointments, which turned into perfectionism. And inevitably, when life hands you a disappointment as a way to humble you, you know, I think, I think God humbles us by saying, hey, you can't have everything you want. For some reason, we have no problem, you know, teaching that to children and toddlers so they don't grow up spoiled. But when life or God hands us <laughs> the same thing and says, hey, you can't have everything you want whenever you want it, we, we throw a tantrum. And, you know, I wonder if in a way we were spoiled in many ways as children. I think Amazon Prime has made us very spoiled. Um, pornography has made us very spoiled. Um, a, a lot of this instant gratification has made us very spoiled and so when our businesses don't succeed right away when our efforts and relationships don't result in immediate changes we're disappointed and that part's okay the disappointment's okay it's the resistance to it that makes creates for so much suffering it's that layer of this shouldn't be happening on top of that that I think creates so much suffering and baby making is no different. And I think that during the trying to conceive process, not for everybody, some of you guys might get lucky and conceive right away, but um, <laughs> disappointment for a lot of people, a lot of couples struggling to conceive. Um, disappointment is an emotion you just got to budget for because um, for the, it took us about four months to get pregnant the first time and four months, I think, to get pregnant the second time, which is not that long. Some couples go a whole year, like, you know, imagine a year or years trying to get pregnant. And then, God forbid, imagine you do get pregnant and then you miscarry. It feels like you got to start all over. So that would be a disappointing experience. But I felt personally, <laughs> I, I would start um, using pregnancy tests on nine, 10 days after ovulation. And if I didn't get a, 
a second line on that test. Oh. And, you know, I, I tried to pretend it was no big deal. I, I was like, oh, I shouldn't have tested anyway. It was too early to test. But the reality is, oh, we, you know, we tried and I waited two weeks and I hoped we were successful. There's something about taking action with an intent and then surrendering and having no control over the outcome in some respect and it still just doesn't go your way and that's disappointing and damn (laughs) that's hard um and I, i this is probably horrible but every time i got a negative test even though logically i knew that statistically it would take me up to a year us up to a year to conceive You know, every time I got that negative test, these thoughts would flood my head of like, you infertile, ugly hag, (laughs) your time is up. You should have had kids when you were 21 and you had more energy. You're never going to get pregnant and your endometriosis is probably so far developed. You're screwed. You're just going to have to accept that you're going to die alone. And, you know, your husband probably thinks you're a total failure and not fertile and doesn't want to be with you. He probably wants to inseminate some young, younger fertile chick who is most definitely not you. Anyway, our brains are very interesting. (laughs) Uh, When I got to Columbia, an acupuncturist told me to breathe often and deeply and slowly, intentionally into my womb. And I did that, and within a month I was pregnant. Please do not associate, again, correlation with causation. I might have gotten pregnant anyway if I didn't do that. So this is not real science. But I also think that um, deep breaths and intentional focus on your womb probably, I don't know, maybe you would stimulate more blood flow and oxygen there and... I think when you breathe deeply into your abdominal space, you probably create more relaxation, less tension, less resistance, and maybe on some spiritual level, you're more open to receiving. So I don't know if it helped, but I just thought I would share that. Um, If you're trying to get, trying to conceive, might not be a bad idea to just slow down and breathe deeply and relax your tummy. But the reality is that Google is going to tell you a million things that you should or shouldn't do. Um, A year ago, I went to a pelvic floor therapist in Vienna before I started trying to conceive, and I was I was nervous because I had just gotten a, a endometriosis diagnosis, and I was a little worried that I wouldn't conceive. And then on top of that, I was worried that my worrying about trying to conceive was going to prevent me from conceiving. I don't know if you have that too. <laughs> And she actually said something that was just so wonderful to hear. And it's not just wonderful to hear in terms of getting pregnant, but just wonderful to hear in life. She told me that um, women in war zones get pregnant and carry on to have children. So she said, if you're stressed about getting pregnant, the stress doesn't necessarily prevent you from getting pregnant, a.k.a. It's okay if you're stressed out, you can still get pregnant when you're stressed. And I don't know why, but that was so liberating. And just hearing that it's okay that I'm stressed out and that there's women in war zones getting pregnant, for some reason that was so relieving to know that I had permission to have anxiety and it wasn't going to cause any harm. I really liked hearing that. Um, That said, don't intentionally do things that you know are going to stress you and your body out, but just know that if unforeseen circumstances come up and you do get stressed, you're going to be fine. (laughs) And I think, I don't know about this, but I spent a lot of time on Google, even though um, I know I shouldn't, but I just found over time that for every wrong thing that you do, someone will tell you that they did that and got pregnant. Um, I've also heard people say, don't do this when when you're pregnant, otherwise it's going to cause a miscarriage. And for every time you see that, some other woman said, I did that my whole pregnancy and I now have a healthy baby. And it's just, (laughs) I just felt like it was a total toss up. So uh, for every wrong thing you do, someone's going to tell you they did that and we're fine. For every right thing you do, someone's going to have done that and it's going to end up horribly for them and they're going to try and tell you not to do that. Anyway, I just, I'm not saying anything scientific here, except for I have a feeling that life, the process of life and 
birth and death. I just think it's it's really uncertain and it's a toss up and we're meant to just grapple with that. So I suggest having some kind of spiritual practice to help you surrender. For me, um, I, I give it to an entity that I call God. Um, I actually really love the, the serenity prayer. God grant me the strength to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Um, I feel like that covers all the bases. <laughs> it's very helpful. And sometimes when I feel really scared and uncertain, um, I talk to God. And I might say something like, you know, God, I'm feeling really overwhelmed or I don't know what to do and I don't know about this and I don't know about that but you know and just saying that for me is is very helpful um if you're atheist or you don't have a spiritual practice I don't think there's anything wrong with that um I I used to I used to be kind of more agnostic and I think that for me it was it was helpful to evolve into or maybe devolve from another perspective, right? <laughs> to go into a perspective where, where I could hand something off to, to some external power, higher power. But I don't judge anyone that doesn't have that, but it's been helpful for me personally. Anyway, you, so if you're trying to conceive, um, just know you can't control when you get pregnant. You can't control when your body takes, um, but you can control your outlook can control your attitude you can control your diet and your behaviors and your breathing you can control um examining where you might be putting unnecessary stress on your body mind and spirit um you can control getting checked out to make sure that things are working properly the plumbing's all good so and also just know that um there's always hope uh, whenever I would start testing, it would be like day nine, day 10, which they say is too early. And I knew that, but some people find out on that day. And so I wanted to be potentially one of those people. So I would start testing on 10 um, days post ovulation. And for this last round, I tested at 10 days and it was negative. And so I thought I was out um, because the first time I got pregnant, I, I got pregnant on, on day nine or I found out on day nine. So I thought maybe I'd always be that way. And the second time around, it was 10 days and it was negative. And then two days later on day 12, it was positive. <laughs> I wonder if sometimes we drive ourselves crazy with all the technology that we have. Um, I almost wish sometimes that we had no option but to, to just wait until we had a missed period or, or um, remember, remember back in the day when we were not alive, when, you know, you didn't even have the option to find out until you had symptoms or until you missed a period. I wonder if we were more chill back then. Now we have all these testing procedures and we're able to create some sense of certainty because we have devices and technology that give us some certainties, but inevitably these new, these, these certainties that we discover, they unlock new uncertainties, which we have no control over. And I think it just <laughs> ends up stressing us out even more. And also it costs more money. We pay more money to get all these tests, which may or may not unnecessarily end up stressing us out when we find something that looks different but might not necessarily be bad. Anyway, I'm not anti-testing. I still got all my all my blood tests and things like that, but just makes me wonder. It makes me wonder if the technology that we have nowadays is it is it causing more or less stress? Um when I got pregnant, I started thinking about like, oh, what should I sh or should I not be doing? And my mom was like, we didn't have the option to know what you guys seem to know. And if we weren't bleeding, we were good. <laughs> and I'm thinking, wow, maybe it, it almost seems like they had more uncertainty than we, we do now. But actually, more uncertainty doesn't mean more anxiety. In fact, I think the more certainty we can potentially have access to, the more we stress out when we don't take advantage of them. It almost would be easier if we didn't have access to them because we could maybe surrender more and not think about all the things that we could have control over. Anyway, I'm choosing to have 
as much hands off as possible um, because I don't want to stress myself out too much. Anyway, um, I want to share what I what I do have going on. So I'm currently recording this at my little private room at a hostel in Madrid because I'm going to be visiting some family. But um, after this week, I'm headed to Austria for about a month to be with my teacher, Steffi Price, who I've mentioned a lot. And it's kind of my last solo trip, hurrah, <laughs> as an independent woman before I got a baby attached to my hip, God willing. Um, I love traveling solo. My husband is in Los Angeles visiting his family, so we're kind of just on our own. By the time I see him again, I'm going to be way bigger. I'm already, I have a little tummy, but it's not very big. I can still hide it right now. <laughs> but I haven't really announced on Instagram. Um, I probably will soon, but I kind of don't want to because I actually don't want a lot of people's comments and perceptions. But on podcasting, it's pretty one directional. So I can tell you this without getting <laughs> the world's feedback, uh, especially on something as, as polarizing as pregnancy and what you should and shouldn't do. So uh, this is my one directional broadcast without having a bunch of people have access to me. Wahaha, even though I know that you could totally go on Instagram and tell me what you think. And I think if you're a Spotify listener, um, you can comment. Sometimes I, I approve them and sometimes I don't. But anyway, sorry, I'm out of breath because that's part of that's part of pregnancy. You get out of breath. But I just wanted to say that I took three months off because I was a vomiting um, potato. And now second trimester is really awesome. And I'm excited to get, get back to work. And my husband's gone and he's working on his business and I'm traveling and I'm alone. And as much as I am going to be enjoying this vacation, I also am hungry to to connect with clients and and work. So um, I just wanted to say I'm I'm here. I'm here to support you. And I will say that there's something really cool about pregnancy that that has connected me to my body on a deeper level. And it's just made my sessions with clients that I do still have at the moment, even though I took a hiatus. Uh, it's just made things more sweet. I feel like I feel more. So I'm, I'm really enjoying working with people both in my Patreon and doing Wizios um, and my one-on-ones. I'm going to be starting a, a group program in, in October, but I'll probably start talking about that more in September. But anyway, I just wanted to say that I have a few different tiers of support. So if you're looking for support, um, here are the different tiers, depending on your budget and, and level of commitment that you want to um, commit to. <laughs> so the first one, obviously, is all my free stuff, podcast, Instagram, um, my email list, which is I'm going to start activating again pretty soon. And the next layer up is a membership on my Patreon. That's 5 to $9 a month. And I post exclusive discounts. I um, have exclusive posts. My patrons were actually the first ones to know I was pregnant. I let them know, Hey, I'm vomiting like crazy and I'm constipated. <laughs> and, uh, that's why I'm not here as much, but I'm still here. And, and they were, you know, there were people so supportive there. It was great. Anyway, I do a monthly community call on there for a couple hours and, um, I share practices that I also share in my courses there and I open up for questions. Um, the $5 per month tier, you can watch that call in retrospect. And the $9 a month tier, you can actually attend the call live and and uh, have a dialogue with me and discuss things with other people. So it just depends on what you want to get out of it. Um, the, sec the next tier I have after that is my Wizio option. And my Wizio is just, you know, my pick my, pick my brain for $67. You can send me a voice note and type me a message and I will make you a 10 minute custom video in response, sharing my thoughts and my opinions, um, my suggestions to you within a one week period. So I'll respond within one week. There's also like a, an emergency option, like a two day option. If, if something really crazy is going on, you want insight quickly. Um, again, it's insight. It's I'm not God. <laughs> I make mistakes, but I, my reviews on Wizio are pretty amazing. Um, I, I think it's because people don't expect much and then they get a lot out of it. So I'm, I love doing them. They're really fun for me. If you, if you ever want to pick my brain, just send me a Wizio. I really enjoy them. Um, the next layer up above that 
is my uh, self-study course, which I just released um, maybe four or five months ago. It's called Both Feet In, and it's kind of like Both Feet In 2.0. I had a Both Feet In before that was just a long course because it was based on a group program that I did that was uh, recorded. And so each lecture was like an hour and a half plus all these practices that just took forever. So I made a new both feet in that has shorter videos that are really concise. It's a lot of audio. And also I wanted it to be open to a lot of people and to actually be completed. So it's probably the most affordable, concise, long form course that I have. It's $197. And I'll just say, if you're a patron, you get a discount. So I'm just, I'm just saying that I'm not saying that anywhere else. I'm just saying on on the podcast that if you're a patron, you get discounts on all my courses. So it's an absolute steal as is, but if you're a patron, it's a steal on top of that as well. Um, and it's, it's a, it's a wonderful course. I put my heart and soul into it. And If you've got one foot out the door, it can really, really be helpful for you because um, the practices I share in there can help you get in touch with your emotions around the past, especially if you've had things like divorces in your family that are influencing your um, decision with your partner. If you've got your one foot out the door because you're so scared of commitment, it'll help you process your emotions around that. It'll help you start to get your opposing aspects of yourself Um, in harmony so that you can find that balance between the I and the we, that that inherent tension that always comes in a relationship, um, and also any any inner child wounds that could be running the show. So I put my heart and soul into that course. Um, There's a lot of it you can do, just, you know, a lot of it's audio, so you can do it while you're taking a walk. It's it's a really great course. So I'm going to link that up here too. And in uh, October, I'm going to have a group program just for both feed in students and that's going to be a steal too. So just stay, stay tuned. Oh my God, I'm out of breath. (sighs) (laughs) And lastly, um, for the next month, it's my birthday month. Um, I'm opening up one-on-ones. I I turned them off while I was in the first trimester because I was sick as a dog, but now I'm feeling a lot better and I've opened up one-on-ones, um, Right now, I'm not offering any packages. It's just one-offs and uh, packs of four. If, you know, if you if you buy a four pack, you get you get a discount. But if you're interested in working with me one-on-one, uh, I really enjoy it, and you can get a lot of support that way. So, yeah, do with that information what you will. If you have any questions about any of these, probably the best spot to find me is on Instagram at Anxious Love Coach. But there's something for everybody, so don't worry if, if you know you're not getting support with me one on one. There's, there's so many ways to get support, and that's it. I hope you got a lot out of this episode. It's really nice to be back. Thanks for listening, and thanks for, thanks for still being here. You know, if you're a subscriber, and I just disappeared off the face of the planet, and then I come back, and here you are listening. Thank you. <laughs> really grateful. Thanks for being a subscriber. And if you enjoyed this episode, let me know. If you didn't, um, yeah, probably do, do whatever you want, I guess. <laughs> I, I uh, might not change. <laughs> uh, but I, I, love, I love knowing when, when you like things. I run this business mostly for fun, so... I'm always open to feedback, but if it interferes with my fun, then I probably won't change it that much. Just being honest. Anyway, I'm out of breath and I'm tired. (sighs) I'm going to pack up and I'm going to go head to see my family a few hours out of Madrid in Spain. And I'll be back when I'm back. Have a great rest of your day, afternoon, evening, whatever time it is. And I look forward to chatting with you again. Talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to the Anxious Love Coach today. If you loved this episode, please hit that subscribe button, leave a review, and follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, and maybe share it with someone that you believe might benefit from these perspectives. Please also subscribe to my email list at www.anxiouslovecoach.com as I'm trying to reduce my reliance on social media. 
In exchange, you will receive my free relationship anxiety meditation and more supportive tools sent your way. If you would like to work with me, head on over to my website at, again, anxiouslovecoach.com to explore different tiers of coaching options and online programs. Thanks again for listening and catch you in the next episode. Have a blessed day.